Hello everyone, this is Brian Leo Star, also known as Space Lion88. If you'd like to support me, you can check out this little boomer shooter I have in the JZ2 engine for one dollar on itch.io. You can also buy some different kinds of comics, some of them considered NSFW, 18 plus adults only, and be warned. Some of them are just adventure fantasy comics about characters surviving in the wilderness and forming friendships and helping each other out. So check them out if you're interested. All right, now let's get into this video about a Gotta very important here. topic. It's the twilight. Hi everybody, this is Brian Leo Star, also known as Space Lion 88, your favorite indie artist at the end of the world, or at the end of one world and the beginning of another one. I wanted to make this video really quick here about, um, I, I suppose, a very important topic that's on everyone's mind right now. Uh, I haven't been posting anything at all, hardly, to social media, because, um, this summer in the past couple years, I've suddenly had a lot of opportunity to make money, uh, under the table money, doing small jobs. So I took those. I always wanted to make a career as an artist, but you know, whatever you can do to survive. Um, so I'm literally always on the go. I'm always like out moving. I got my bicycle here. Probably isn't going to come out. Let's see. Let me see torch. Now you can see. I don't know. So anyway, that's why I'm I'm sorry to anybody if you've been looking for connections. Um, this last year I took my art out to the street finally. Here we are. Got things falling over from the wind. And we have a gallery set up. The sad thing is, though, in this particular um, city in this state, in order to do that, you have to pay twenty-five dollars or whatever, and it's like a one once once a month thing. So it's not like you can just go out on the street all the time, and you know, like they do in New York City. So um, the election. Here's what I have to say about it, because a lot of people have been asking me and telling me, you need to vote for this person, you need to vote for that person. And here's the thing, I've been watching a lot of people on both sides, and, um, you know, it seems pretty obvious to me that one candidate seems to possibly be a more logical choice for the stability of Western civilization and such. And I take this election, I take all these elections very seriously, I do. It's not a, it's not something I just flippantly disregard as a, as an artist, a crazy person, a right brain person. I don't just, you know, ignore it. I take it seriously. I'm invested in it. So this particular election, I'm not voting. And the reason is I don't feel that I have, um, I don't have information. I'm in the dark right now. And I believe there's journalists who, in, who have good intentions, independent journalists, and they want to tell the truth. But it's very difficult to tell who those are amidst all the sellouts. And it's hard to tell, you know, after having witnessed how many independent journalists I've seen get removed, taken down, deleted, never to return from YouTube and other sites, which is disgusting. I don't feel that we as Americans, or I as an individual anyway, can really trust 
any of these information sources right now and you know they're they're doing what they're doing but I also can't go places um, I'm exhausted right now because I'm doing everything I can to just get a little bit of money to get by I don't even have a place to live I don't have a car I mean I live with you know whoever, people benevolent people but I don't expect them to allow me to stay there I'm ready like I'm ready for anything but, uh, you know, honestly, I, I don't have a lot of stakes in the game right now as far as either candidate goes for my situation that I'm in. I've spent years and decades on this art career trying to get it out there. I believe I have content that could definitely sell, and it's being deliberately shadow banned because of that. Because I have a lot of value, I have a lot of content that has shock value. It catches people's eyes. It catches their attention. It would keep their attention. My animations, my art, my comics, they are unique in that way and I'm saying that with humility and if anybody disagrees you can tell me and that's okay I'm not I'm not uh, sensitive about it I was more than ready to to calmly and appreciate the haters and the trolls if I ever had them but they never came the internet's completely shut down so it's criminal I think it's the same thing as tampering with somebody's mailbox and after what I've experienced personally firsthand from all of these internet companies and everybody shadow banning me and then attempting to explain it to people and very few people understanding or listening it's very clear to me that um, the, the entire information system is completely broken corrupted, all of it, none of it is trustworthy there might be some good people in who were good at one time but until they get this situation fixed you know, I'm, I'm a, a working citizen, I work in lots of ways, I work any way that the, the someone gives me options I'm gonna take it to make money and I've been trying forever to find a way to monetize this stuff and uh, they keep blocking it and deleting things that I post and deleting my accounts on several websites so we I, I've never experienced a fair capitalism game on the internet so far if you want to talk about capitalism versus uh, socialism I haven't experienced either I've been in this nowhere land, so I'm sorry. Um, I'm not voting in this election. I, it, I'll say this: if uh, if Trump wins and does good things, great. I, I hope that happens. I, if Harris wins and does good things, the country does well. Good. I hope that happens. If I was really spiteful <clears throat> and I thought it was a good idea, I could go and cast a spite vote to a candidate who seems very obviously uh, maybe not the best choice long term. It would not be an intelligent choice. If I was a, a spiteful, angry person, I could go and deliberately vote to try to, you know, destroy civilization more, but I'm not doing that. And quite frankly, I don't trust any information enough about either of them at this point. And none of these candidates are talking about making the the algorithms or the code for Google or Facebook or any of these sites transparent. No one is talking about making the code transparent. That needs to happen first and foremost, okay? Before we can do anything. I can't I can't make a vote right now. I don't know anything about anything right now. We're we're all in the dark. That's what people don't understand. You're all in the fucking dark when it comes to your media. It's more corrupted than ever. And I could just post things all day long, no one will ever see it. What I said was what the internet's done is like, you know how we had phone books printed in the 90s? If you can imagine, say the, the company, like the government, the local government would say, we don't want these ghetto people shopping at our nice grocery store across town. So or we don't want them going to these car repair places or these businesses. So we're going to give this phone book to them over here. And we're not going to list those businesses over there because we only want these rich people to go over here to these clubs. Now, obviously, when they do that, there's going to be lots of people in the ghetto and homeless who go and travel on foot and do urban exploration and they take the bus. Or maybe some of them do have shitty cars that are all beat up and they drive places and they're going to go exploring and they're going to use Google Maps or they're going to use maps and find out what's around. Uh, but there's plenty of people who, for whatever reason, can't travel as much or aren't able to or they don't have time and they are isolated. Maybe they're retired, maybe they're disabled or they're in a wheelchair or something. Or maybe they're too young and no one educates them and they have stupid parents that don't tell them anything and they just have no chance. So there are some people that will then miss out on an opportunity to go somewhere that maybe 
both the benef- both those people and the business would benefit from them showing up. But now because they printed phone books which um, deliberately exclude the listings of those addresses, a lot of people won't find those businesses and thus the entire economy suffers and everybody suffers and it's just wrong. It's just wrong on all levels. There's absolutely no nothing good, no reason they should ever do anything like that. But they did. They did it on an absolutely rampant scale all over the internet. The entire uh, public communications utility that is the internet, that whatever we're supposed to be working with is completely propagandized, polarized, biased, filtered. Uh, it's just ridiculous. And, you know, you still glance at it because you can still get inevitably some truths about what's going on. But it's so ridiculous that it's not trustworthy at all. And every single thing that you look at on the internet, if you don't have the fucking money to have a, a solar-powered van and travel across the country and the world and meet everybody, you should not trust a goddamn thing you see on any screens when you're isolated and you have no money to go places and no one talks to you. You should not trust a goddamn thing from anybody, and I absolutely do not. After the amount of... Uh, everyone I've tried to talk to about this, my own family, just arrogant, arrogant... Ignorant blindness, turning blind eyes. Okay, so there's my opinion if it matters. If I knew it was a good candidate to vote for, or would I vote? Yes. I was very, very invested in the election uh, when Andrew Yang was running because I think he was really smart. I think he was very courageous. I think he was saying the right things. I watched what happened to him as he got swallowed up, probably gang stalked because he was too smart. Okay. And they shut his whole thing down and everything that, that I think he had. He knew what was coming. He knew what was. He would have helped this country a lot. Things would have been great. But uh, there you go, Andrew Yang for president. <laughs> Whoever gets in now, I hope things. I, I hope it goes great for everybody. I, I wish the best. I hope they fix this capitalism, this broken capitalism situation, so that people like myself, independent artists, independent journalists have a fair chance to show up in the marketplace with the content that they produced as their profession. I sure hope that that gets fixed. In the meantime, all I can do is just keep working as much as I am, so, um... A couple people have finally reached out to me for, um, requests, so I'm gonna get on that. I've just been more swamped than ever, which is good with this outdoor work. I like this stuff. I like it a lot. It doesn't pay hardly anything, but I like it, and I'm I like I'm grateful for uh, something to do, for work. And that's why I've been out roaming, moving, and then just too tired, can't go anywhere. And then I work on these animations, these games, art, interactive media, digital media, hand drawn, organic, 2D frame by frame animation, mind you. So there it is. I ain't voting in this election. And uh, you can thank this extremely, extremely corrupt communication system that's been completely taken over in this country a long time ago for that. This is the most dire and immediate threat to everyone right now. This, this is something we all need to really, really, really look at. I don't know how in God's name this was able to happen. Not the geoengineering not the chemtrail climate engineering solar radiation management. What allowed that to happen in the first place, what you're about to hear here about the draconian censorship, that is the number one source. That is what allows all of this other destructive, all these destructive practices to take place. This is Geoengineering Watch Global Alert News from October 26, 2024, episode number 481, with Dane Wigington. He's a um, an activist in favor of the Earth's natural life support systems, if they're able to be recovered. And he has brought this subject up several times with Douglas McMartin, which is good. This is something we need to really pay attention to. I'm glad that he keeps bringing this up. And I've been uh, time stamping and cataloging episodes and saving audio 
Um, and so I'm gathering all that evidence here. But just pay attention to what's, what's being said. Here we are at 5 minutes and 45 seconds into episode number 481. Pay attention to what Dane Wigington says about what happened here regarding Facebook. Facebook, which I don't know if it still is, but it certainly was at one time or maybe considered a public communications utility given how many people use it. It's a free accessible source if you have the internet. Just like a phone book was a free accessible source if you had an address from, you know, during the 1990s or whatever in America. So what's been allowed to happen here, I don't understand how, but here we go. Management operations is completely and totally flawed. For the record, Dr. Douglas McMartin is the scientist that was solely responsible for triggering Facebook's draconian censorship of... So he says, um, Douglas McMartin is solely responsible. And I guess that statement is true. It bothered me because, no, he's not one. He's not the person who's the only person responsible for that. Whoever manages and runs these goddamn messed up AI algorithms and systems that allow for such immediate reporting and taking down of you know, vitally important information, potentially, or any information. There should not be this level or any level of censorship that we've seen on any of these platforms at all whatsoever. And the fact that apparently one single person has the ability to trigger an entire lockdown and, and everyone take a look and, 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 and try to censor this incredibly important information, the dimming, the documentary... I don't, I mean, this is where I'm just, I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. That there's that many human beings who are capable of working in a place who will agree to do that. 605. Groundbreaking geoengineering watch documentary proving that climate engineering is a reality. Documentary titled The Dimming, now with over 25 million views on YouTube in spite of the censorship. Again, triggered by Dr. Douglas McMartin. Also for the record, geoengineeringwatch.org sued Douglas McMartin in the attempt to hold him personally accountable for triggering the censorship of The Dimming. This legal action was a six-figure-plus expense for geoengineeringwatch.org, but worth the effort. Our legal action was covered by major media sources, including Bloomberg News. Our lawsuit sent a message to those in the science community that sent a message, I would say, that this is a, um, a pretty big issue, that if you call it to the attention of people in authority, someone in authority is going to have to inevitably look and say, oh, this is actually very important. Oh, this is actually a form of international warfare. Oh, this is actually criminal activity, which is causing way more destruction and harm to everyone. Oh, I guess we shouldn't be censoring somebody trying to raise the alarm about the most immediate and dire threat to everyone's health on the whole entire planet. Oh, I guess we shouldn't allow one person to be able to censor and lock down all this information. Now, this right here is testament to how this is probably actually the source of uh, most of the rest of the destruction we're seeing across the fucking planet all the wars and the bombings, it all comes back to here. Communications. Communications getting shut down. That. That right there is that little tiny uh, crack in the dam. And all you need to do is just, just give it a little bit more pressure and the whole dam bursts and we're all in hell. And the fact that Dane Wigington has, has, has uh, stated this, you know, and he had to go through and actually go to the point of actually filing a lawsuit. I, I mean, of course, of course, he and geoengineeringwatch.org would inevitably win <laughs> with absolutely superior logic and evidence based data gathered. OK, but the fact that he even had to go to that point in the first place and put that money into it. Well, why? After years and years and years and goddamn 481 episodes of almost an hour-long broadcast. 
I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody, I don't think any of these citizens can make a, a valid vote right now. Nobody knows. So, whatever happens, I wish everyone the best. I hope you're all staying safe out there in the world. Is it still going on? Look at that. Civilization didn't collapse yet. It's still, it's still breathing. It's still pulsing. Look at that. All the cars and the lights and the people. It just keeps going and going and going. Up and down the asphalt, the pavement, all day long. It's crazy. It's still here. It'll probably still be here. Whatever happens, I recommend anybody, don't invest in any kind of doom scrolling into the world crap, because that's not coming either. I think that uh, human civilization is going to be around for thousands of years no matter what, so invest in that. My advice. Everyone have a good day. Night. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching again. This is Brian Leo Starr, also known as Space Lion 88. And remember, you can support me by checking out these uh, uh, digital products I have here. It is Star Haven Balls of Plasma, a boomer shooter in the uh, GZ Doom engine. And here is uh, here are some comics I have on Gumroad. You can see previews of these on DeviantArt. All right, everyone, stay safe.